yesterday as we were doing one point perspective, we used three vocabulary words. So I want you to title the top of this page, Two Points, Perspective. And we're going to define first those, those three vocabulary words that we used yesterday. All right, so I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so that you can... really see it. All right. So the first one, we used horizon line. And as we work with our perspective assignment that's coming up, you're going to need to make sure that you are using these correct terms, right? Because it'll be what I talk about as well. All right. So the horizon line this is the eye level. Sometimes people just call it the eye level line. And it represents the eye level of the viewer. Okay, so if you were to take a box and you held, for example, your supply box directly in front of your face at eye level, how many sides of the box would you see? One. And if, no, not one or two, maybe. You would only see one. And if you need to do this, guys, you should have your supply boxes with you because you need the eraser out of it um, you need to you know if you're keeping a pencil in there so if you actually hold that box up right in front of you you only see the front of the box and if you shift that box to the left or to the right then you see the front of the box and one of the sides think about the drawing you did yesterday in one point perspective if you then take that box and hold it above your eye level what do you see now? Are you seeing the top of the box, the bottom of the box, the side of the box? You're definitely seeing the bottom. Okay, you probably still see the front. And depending on if you've moved to the left or the right, you might also see a third side. If you were holding it below your eye level, what are you seeing? You're seeing the top. Okay, so when we talk about the horizon line being the eye level line, you're talking about what you see because of essentially where your eye is. If you're sitting down, you have a different perspective on what's stationary around you. Okay, so the next term that we used was vanishing point. And a vanishing point is the imaginary point on the horizon line. And represents, oops, nope, not and represents. This is not my long line. Imaginary point on the horizon line. Receding lines converge to these points. Now, do you remember what we called those receding lines? We talked about this, it's the third vocabulary word, it's the one that we used yesterday. Anybody know what, what those receding lines are called? Started with an O. Yeah, it's a big word. Um, and one that we haven't probably used very much. Okay, so I'm going to leave that one up. 
so orthogonal. <laughs> it's a word. Orthogonal lines. I'm sorry? We did. But but since we don't re since we don't remember what they are, we're writing them down. Alright? Okay, so orthogonal lines. These are the diagonal knot lines that recede to the vanishing point. Okay, so just a minute ago I asked you what did we call the receding lines that converge on the point, the vanishing point? Well, we call them orthogonal lines. Okay, so these two things go together. So when we're drawing perspective, I'm going to be using these terms. And I want you to remember what the terms are. I want you to be able to use them. Okay, so if I ask you later on, what are the diagonal lines that go to the vanishing point, what term are you going to tell me? Orthogonal lines, yes. Yes. All right, so we are still going to use, I only use the top part of my page, okay, because we are going to do our two-point perspective drawing on this page here. Let me zoom out a little bit more. Out. Okay, so we begin with our horizon line. All right, now horizon line is horizontal. It does need to be horizontal to the page, parallel to the top and bottom of the page, as close as you can get it. Now the difference today is we have two vanishing points. Okay, now we're going to put these two vanishing points where we can actually see them on the page. So I'm going to put them as far as I can on either end of my horizon line. All right, now we do not want to make these points giant dots. All right, if you make it a giant dot, then you are actually lining up with a whole bunch of different spots. We want this to be a small point, okay? Now, sometimes when people are drawing really large landscapes using two-point perspective, they'll actually have another piece of paper behind here, and the dots will be off the page, okay? So, we now have our horizon line, we have our vanishing points here. When we draw our boxes in two-point perspective, okay, when we're drawing our boxes in two-point perspective, we are going to start with just a line, okay? Now, the height of this line is really up to you, but just like yesterday, we're going to put 10 of them on here. And I think I'm going to put one a little bit to the left, right? So I'm just going to draw a line. Okay, so everybody start with a line. A vertical line. Starting with a vertical line. Now, when we're using two-point perspective, we're usually looking at a side. We're not, we're not looking at something directly in front of us, okay? So our, our point of, of vision is slightly different than one point perspective, okay? 
So I'm going to take this, the top and bottom of this line, and these are these orthogonal lines. Now, if you remember yesterday, we did a lot of erasing here with the orthogonal lines. So I encourage you to draw lightly so that you can go back and erase these. So I'm going to start from the top, and this represents the edge of one of our boxes. This is actually the corner of one of our boxes. So I'm going to lightly draw this line. It connects up with the vanishing point. Very important. Okay? And then I'm going to draw the other orthogonal line. Okay? Now, if you remember, we just talked about horizon line. We talked about the box. If the box is above eye level, what part of the box are we going to see? Are we going to see the top of the box or the bottom of the box? We're going to see the bottom of the box. Okay? So this first line represented a corner of the box. So we now have to decide how long is this side. All right? We're going to do that in just a minute. So we've drawn to our first vanishing point. Now we are going to do the same thing to our opposite vanishing point. very lightly now if you remember from yesterday when we were drawing our one point perspective boxes we had three orthogonal lines going to the vanishing point in order to see these sides right okay so right now on one side we've got two and on the other side we have two but we can't see the bottom yet in order to figure out where the bottom is we have to know how long each one of these sides is so this is a left side of the box and this is the right side of the box you decide how long the left side of the box is and how long the right side of the box is. But it is very important that the lines be parallel. So this line right here, that is the edge of the box. The other edge of the box has to be parallel. So I'm going to line my ruler up, slide it out. I'm going to make sure these two lines are parallel. Again, just like yesterday, this is the part where a lot of people make the biggest mistake and it makes their box look off. These two lines that represent the sides of the box have to be parallel. Okay? So, that is the side, that is the inside of the left side of my box. And I can erase the rest of those orthogonal lines. Okay? If I drew lightly, they're easy to erase. Okay? <coughs> yes? So we draw, we draw uh, like a triangle with pyramid, and then we draw uh, square and tight no, you, you, yeah. do, you do it step by step just like I've done it. So we started with a line, a vertical line. From the top of the vertical line and the bottom of the vertical line, we drew the orthogonal lines to the vanishing point on both sides. Then I decided how long my box was going to be. Okay, the further I draw this out, so I could make this box look really long by doing this. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And right now, all I've got is the left side and the right side. So to make this right side, I still have to make sure the edges of the sides are parallel. So I'm going to slide my ruler out. I'm lining it up. I want to make sure I'm seeing something that looks parallel. And i got to fit ten boxes on here. So if I make gigantic boxes, that's going to get kind of hard. 
So there's my line. Okay? Right side of the box, left side of the box. And as you notice, look at how much I'm erasing. So if you're lining up your ruler with that vanishing point, and once you've really got the hang of it, you don't have to draw the complete line. It saves you from a little bit of erasing. Okay? So what is the only part of this box that I'm missing now? I'm missing the bottom. Okay? But before I could draw the bottom, with two-point perspective, I had to establish where my two sides were. Okay? So, from the opposite corner. So, I am working now on the bottom. So, I'm looking at the corner here of the right side of the box. And I line that up with the left vanishing point. Okay, so I'm lining my ruler up with the corner of the right side of the box with the left vanishing point. And I'm going to draw that line. Now, in order to find where this meets, what's going to determine the end of the box, I am now going to take the corner of the left side of the box, and I'm lining it up with the right vanishing point. And where they intersect determines the bottom of the box. Okay. So if y'all are drawing along with me, we're going to do several of these. And then I'm going to have you do them on your own. Okay? <clears throat> now for learning purposes, we're not going to try and do one that sideways, all right? We're just going to keep, we're going to keep our lines perpendicular here, all right? So this is, this is something that's really important. And if y'all have ever wondered what the uh, usefulness of math is, there is tons of math and science that is applied in art, okay? So... In some of your art classes, maybe they don't use the, the math and science terms, but math and science plays a huge part in art. In fact, Isaac Newton, he wasn't an artist, but he's the one that pretty much discovered the color wheel and drew and created the first color wheel. Okay? So math and science definitely go together. So we have this horizon line, this is horizontal line, these lines that represent the edges of the box, they're vertical, they're also perpendicular to the horizon line. What does that mean? Krista, what's it mean? What's it mean? Speak up for me, I can't hear you through the mask. They cross at a 90 degree angle, yes. Okay, so if I were to extend this line down here, this is a 90 degree angle. If I were to extend this line, and y'all don't have to do this, I'm just showing you. Okay, but each one of these lines is making a 90 degree angle. Alright, the most common mistake that is made when you're working with two point perspective is when you draw the side here, you don't make it perpendicular. It's just the, it's exactly like the most common mistake we talked about yesterday. The sides of a two-point perspective object have to be parallel to each other or it doesn't look right. Okay? Your visual perception of what you're seeing should look off 
if you don't draw these lines perpendicular to the horizon line and parallel to each other. Okay? That is really, really important. Right? So, we drew one of these boxes above the horizon line. Now we're going to draw one below the horizon line. So the first step, and if you look, this line right here, this first line that we drew, we didn't measure it, but it determined how tall the box was. It determined the height of the box. So you are deciding the height of the box simply by drawing that line. Now, we could be specific. We could say, I want you to draw two inch boxes, right? But I'm gonna want you to have a variety of boxes. I want you to experiment with different sizes. So I'm just asking you to make a line. Okay, so step one, make a vertical line that is perpendicular to the horizon line. Okay, and then we're gonna use the top of that line and line it up with the vanishing point. And I'm gonna draw my orthogonal line. And remember, as long as you've lined it up, you don't have to draw the entire line. It saves you a little bit of erasing. But do draw lightly. Erasing is much easier if you draw lightly. And remember the trick to drawing lightly, don't have a death grip on your pencil. Let your pencil slide through your fingers. You can't make a dark, heavy mark if your pencil is sliding through your fingers. Okay? All right. Now we got to draw the orthogonal lines to the opposite vanishing point. And to make these lines look really precise, you've got to make sure your ruler is lined up with the top of that first line and the vanishing point. Be very specific. Don't just have your lines going randomly anywhere. Okay, next step. This is the really important one where we need to keep all the sides, okay? All the sides of our boxes have to be parallel. So I'm gonna put my ruler, line it up with the first edge, that first side we drew. I'm gonna slide it out. The, this right here, this edge has to be parallel to my ruler. Draw that line. And then I don't need the rest of that orthogonal line there. Now I like to go ahead and erase them just because if I have too many lines still left on my paper, it gets a little confusing about what line I'm supposed to use. Okay, so as soon as you have finished, I suggest getting rid of the lines you don't need anymore. Okay, I don't need those lines anymore. I'm finished with them. Now I gotta decide how long I want the other side here to be. So I made this front a little bit short. I think I'm gonna make this next side a little bit longer. Right, again, we're not measuring. I'm just, I want a longer side. So to make a longer side, I'm gonna make sure my ruler is parallel. I'm gonna slide it out, and I'm gonna slide it out just a little bit further, okay? Visually, you should start to see the left and right side of this box. Okay, so just by having my ruler here, what other side of the box do I not see yet? I don't see the top yet. Okay, so I know I'm going to be making the top. I've got this short side. I've extended my ruler out a little bit further so that this right side looks longer. I've made sure that my ruler and this edge right here are parallel. 
I draw that line and I get rid of the orthogonals that I am not going to use anymore. I don't want to leave them there to be confusing. Okay? So I know that because my box is below the horizon line, that I'm going to see the top of the box. Okay, remember this, this line represents our eye level. So that horizon line, anything below the horizon line is like you looking down on it. So I'm going to draw the top of the box. That means I need to use this point from the right side of the box the right edge, I line it up with the left vanishing point. And I know I don't have to go very far, so I'm not going to draw a great big orthogonal line. Okay? This saves me some erasing. And then from the left corner, the left top side of this box, I line it up with the right vanishing point. And where they intersect finishes out the top of the box. So I can erase can erase those lines. All right, so if the box is above the horizon line, it's like I'm looking up, I see the bottom of the box. If the box is below the horizon line, it's like I'm looking down, and I see the top of the box. If the box is on the horizon line, Am I going to see a top or a bottom? No. It's as if I'm holding the box directly in front of me. Okay? So, I'm going to give y'all... Are we, are we finished with our second box? Okay. So, this time, we're going to put a box directly on the horizon line. And again, this line is... And I'm just going to let, this is perpendicular to that horizon line. Now I'm going to start making my orthogonal lines a little bit shorter so I don't have to do as much erasing. But I still absolutely must make sure my ruler is lined up my ruler has to be at the top of the line that I've indicated is going to be my box and it has the line up at the vanishing point. I cannot just draw random lines here. So there's my orthogonal line. Like I said, I don't want to do quite as much erasing. I am going to go ahead and get these lines out of the way so that they're not confusing me. So this is my orthogonal line. It does line up with the vanishing point. All right. I'm going to draw the other orthogonal line that's at the bottom. Okay. And then I'm going to slide this over, making sure that it is parallel. Actually, wait. I'm going to go ahead and do my other two orthogonal lines. Let's do it the same, same way we've been doing it. Okay, so I go to the other side. Make sure it is lined up with the top of my first, my first vertical line that's perpendicular with my horizon line. That represents that front edge lined up with my vanishing point. 
and I do that again at the bottom. Got to be lined up with my vanishing point. <clears throat> so I'm seeing right now the left side and the right side. I just have to determine how long the left and the right side are. So put my ruler on here. I want to make sure it stays parallel. And I'm going to make this just look like it's a really tall box. I'm going to get rid of my extra orthogonal line here. Okay. Line it up again parallel, slide the ruler out, and like I said, really tall and skinny this time. Okay. I don't need the rest of that orthogonal line. And remember what we just said. If it is sitting on the horizon line, if it is at eye level, we're not seeing a top or a bottom. We are only seeing those two sides. So we don't have that extra step of making the lines intersect to see the top or the bottom. It's done. And we erase the horizon line because this is solid and we don't want to see it. Okay? So we have three different views here depending upon where our eye level is and what we see of these boxes all right now your job today is to draw 10 of these please don't put them all on the horizon line i want some of them to be above some of them to be below so even though this is a practice exercise I want you to think about what makes up a good composition. A good composition spreads the information out on the entire work surface here. So if I did all of my design right up here, then this part of my composition would look like it was missing something. Okay? So as you do this, we're going to fill up this space. Okay, now what I'm going to intentionally do here, and y'all can draw this along with me. We'll do one more before we, I set you out on your own. Okay, um, what are we going to do if we end up creating a box and it's going to have some overlapping? Right, we ran into this problem yesterday. Now it looks more interesting. It makes it more complicated, but it also looks more interesting. Okay, so... I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to make this really, alright, let's put one right here, okay, towards the bottom, page here. Okay. So I know I'm definitely going to have an issue, because it's so close to this one, I'm definitely going to have an issue with overlap, right? I have to think about where my lines are going to go and how they're going to interfere with this box right here. All right. And let's actually make let's actually make this a little taller because um, I, I want to be able to see what I've, I've got going. Here. Okay. So this first side with the orthogonal lines, I don't have anything in the way. I don't have to draw the entire line. Remember, I just have to make sure that I'm being accurate with where I line my ruler up. Okay. And for this one, again, I'm going to line it up with the vanishing point. But I don't want to draw through this box. 
Okay? So I line up the bottom edge with my vanishing point, but my orthogonal line is going to stop when it hits this box right here. Okay? And just for demonstration purposes, I think I can make this look like it hits both of them. Okay, so I'm going to make this a giant box here. Okay. So I'm now going to slide my ruler out. I said I want to make this really big for a reason. This, the edge of my ruler, and, and look, I can look at it with this horizon line too, and make sure that it is making a 90 degree angle. There's another check to make sure that it's parallel right here. There's my line, okay? So this is the side of this box. It's really super big. You can erase the extra orthogonal line there. Okay. Yep. Now on this one over here. Yes. I'm gonna make it look like. Now, if you look here, look at all these lines that I have to use to make sure that this is parallel. I have this one and this one that are on the box, but they're kind of far away. But if all of the sides of our boxes are being perpendicular to the horizon line, that, that actually means that these two lines are parallel to the lines on my other box, right? Okay, so if I use that, I'm still working with this space right up here. I know that it connects down here someplace, but I can't see it. So the only part of the line I'm drawing is right there. So, I have to now make the top or the bottom of the box. Making the top of the box. Alright, so, I line my ruler up. Now, what can you tell me the problem I'm going to have already? Yeah, where is it going to intersect? It's probably going to intersect behind you, but that might actually be okay. All right, so I'm going to stop my line on the outside part of the box there. Okay? Okay? And then I'm going to line it up again. This back one is lining up with the opposite, and I'm going to stop it too. Okay. So now it kind of looks like this box is kind of sitting on the edge of that one. And, uh, and it kind of looks like this one's almost connected and sitting in the back of it. Alright? So we can actually do some really interesting imaginative things with these two point perspective boxes. Okay, now, uh, what I believe I'm going to do, I'm going to make a change in Schoology for this. Because uh, the time that we have left here in class is, is really not enough time for you to, to work with these on your own. You should have four, I want you to have ten. Okay, so I originally made the assignment due today. I'm going to change it and I'm going to make this assignment due tomorrow. Right? I want you to right now go ahead and draw a box on your own, at least one more today, so that you have a total of five on your paper. And then we will do the other five tomorrow in class. And I'll kind of walk around and, and look at what you're doing and, and, and help you out if there's some things that you need to adjust. Okay? 
Let's go. Do the last one. And then we will finish this tomorrow. <laughs>